Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're gonna to talk about the latest headset to come from Astro, it's the A10 Gen 2. Now, if at the end of this review, you think this is the right headset for you, I'll have a link in the description below. Generic Amazon affiliate link, no special uh, marketing thing with them. Buy it however you want, but I just wanna let you know it's there and it does support the channel. This headset was not sent to me for review. I went into a local Best Buy and purchased it. Uh, regardless of if it was or not, that doesn't change our opinion of the headset or affect our review in any way, but I just wanna let you know. Now I have a few chapters on this video to help make it easier for you to navigate. I'm going to start trying to stick to a, a certain format for all my future headset reviews to make it easier. So basically we're going to talk about what you get in the box, build quality features, comfort, microphone test, sound quality, any special experiences or things I notice after using it for a while, and then we'll give you final thoughts at the end, which will include how it compares to others in this price range. First off, you get five different color choices. I have it in black here. It's also available in white. It's available in gray, which is my favorite color wash for this, a minty green, and lilac, which is a purple color. So there's a lot of good choices. This kind of follows the same uh, philosophy that you see on the Logitech G Series headsets because Logitech owns Astro now. So that trickles down and it affects not just the color of the exterior, but also the cabling and little accents as well. Now, as far as what you get in the box, there isn't much to it. You get a headset, it's analog, so there's no charge cables or anything, a detachable cable, an owner's quick start guide, and a sticker. That's it, that's all you need, and it's priced accordingly. So this headset is $60, and it's designed to work with anything with a headphone jack. So when you go to the Astro website, it asks what platform, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, etc. They all work on all platforms because they are just using the headphone jack on your controller, or PC, or sound card, however you wanna connect it, even a phone if it has the a headphone jack. Um, so it's completely universal, don't worry about buying one and see if it works with the other. It works on all of them just the same. Now, as far as specs go, I'm not gonna focus too much on frequency response. Most gaming headsets are rated for 20 to 20,000 hertz. Means nothing, it just means it can produce some kind of sound from 20 to 20,000. Whether it's flat or not is a totally different thing, but we'll get into that. So, what I do wanna say is these things are insanely light, uh, under 250 grams, so they are paperweight light. They also have small drivers. So this is a 32 millimeter driver, one of the smallest drivers I've reviewed on a name brand headset. Usually the, the cheaper ones are 40 millimeter, 42, 50, 52, 60, et cetera. So it's rare to see them go in the 30s. Um, we'll talk about how that affects sound quality if it does later. But I do wanna say one thing that's really nice about these at this price point is the sensitivity rating. For those of you that don't know, the driver size has nothing to do with how loud it it can get based off of the signal you're sending it. So a lot of people are getting this to connect to a controller uh, or a PC. They don't have very strong uh, sound output from the amp. Uh, the controllers are very weak. So sensitivity is the most important thing for a gaming headset that's being plugged into a headphone jack. This has a 104 decibel sensitivity rating, which means even though they're technically less powerful than some other headsets in this price range, they can actually get just as loud, if not louder, because of how efficient they are at turning that energy into sound. So that's a huge win right off the bat. I can tell you with initial impressions and after messing it for a while, this thing is built like a tank. Um, that's probably to me its biggest selling point and they advertise how durable this thing is. I mean, look at that. I wouldn't do that on all my headsets because um, one, they're either very expensive or I get nervous because it doesn't look like it can handle much more stress. So I can tell you right off the bat, the way this uh, headband is designed, it's extremely durable. It seems well made. I don't get any weird rattles. So huge win on the A10 Gen 2 for the perceived durability. The other thing I wanna point out is this comes with a detachable cable. It is a proprietary cable from Astro. So yes, it's good that it's detachable, but if it breaks, you have to buy a new one through them if it's available. So I do wanna call that out. The microphone is not detachable, removable or replaceable. It is a flip to mute, which I like. Um, but other than that, that's about it. Now I mentioned the cable that is included is proprietary. However, it is an extremely durable looking cable. It feels premium. It's rubber, which I actually prefer rubber cables in a lot of cases because it doesn't transfer noise from it rubbing on your shirt into the headset or headphone, which means when you move your head around, you shouldn't hear any weird staticky or fabric scraping uh, sounds going to your ear cup. So it's a more pleasant experience in real world use. Yes, braided looks cool, but for everyday use, rubber to me actually performs better. Now, I do want to say something that's really cool about this or point this out. Let's get that into focus. That little plug right there 
uh, there are extra pins on it. That's because when this is plugged into the headset, this A10 Gen 2 works on the Mixamp Pro uh, from Astro, which is a $130 amp DAC, has the volume, has the game to chat mix on PC and console, etc. Um, this, when you mute, will change the indicator lights on the Mixamp to red um, with that extra signal. I think that's really cool. Most headsets, because they're obviously not Astro, they're not going to send that signal to the mix amp. So it's a nice little hidden feature ad, but I wanted to point that out. Now, as far as adjusting volume goes on the headset, there is a volume wheel built into it. It is on the cable, so I'm gonna show you that. Um, it's not it's not bad. It's I like that they it kind of sticks out a little bit because it's easier to actually grab with your thumb. Um, the headset wire will be on your left, so it's more of a natural way of doing it. Um, it works, there isn't any static noise or anything from adjusting the sound, but there's nothing built into the headset itself for audio control. All right, now it's time to talk about comfort. And there are some things I absolutely love about this headset and some things that I am not a fan of. So the first and foremost, I mentioned the headband earlier and how durable it is. The headband padding is phenomenal, especially at this price point. Getting this kind of, um, I guess, adjustability and give, this is a very, very plush memory foam headband. It's extremely comfortable. Um, so I didn't have any pressure points and I often, test them with hats. Um, so there is obviously at the top of your, some hats, they have that little uh, button or snap at the top, if you will. It can create pressure points. This headset is so soft that you it just disappears into it. Now, another thing I love, and I think this is where Astro got it perfectly right, is the clamp force. This is a light headset, which means it doesn't need an incredibly strong clamp force to stay on your head. A seal and creating a good audio um, seal around your ear is something different, but as far as comfort goes, they really have the perfect amount of clamp force for this size headset. It's extremely comfortable, it's very light and gentle, but it doesn't move when I move my head back and forth, so I don't feel like I always have to screw with it. I actually like that with this adjustability, which is notched by the way, you have these little uh, patterns on the headset, it makes it easier to dial it in so both sides have the same, that way you have a nice symmetrical fit. So the headband portion, is one of the best, if not the best, at this price range. Um, they really designed this perfectly. There's some adjustability in the ear cups because they can pivot um, barely, but there is some pivot there, um, but there is no rotation. So uh, most people, well, a lot of people have a different shaped head. And if you don't have the right seal or the right pressure, you may find that the back of the ear cups or the front will have more pressure than the opposite side. So I'm not a huge fan that there's no rotation in this. This is the same problem I have with the Astro A20 Gen 2s. They're um, fixed around the headband. So it certainly helps with durability if you're concerned with that. And this will still work and be comfortable for a lot of people. However, you don't get the full flexibility that some of their headsets in this price range give you. Now the one issue I have with comfort on this headset, the, the only real issue is the ear cup size is incredibly small. It's probably one of the smallest ear cup openings I've seen on any headset I've ever used. Um, it's comfortable from a sense that the padding is phenomenal. I think this memory foam is pretty much perfect. And the material is actually a perfect blend of breathability, feels soft on your skin, but still creates a nice seal if you can get a seal because of the ear cup opening. A small ear cup like this means that if you have larger ears, whether shape wise or just overall size or sticking off your head a little bit, you're gonna have some issues with the A10 Gen 2. Some people cannot stand or enjoy the feeling of headphones pressing on your ear at all. They need a larger ear cup that goes around it. The A10 is the extreme opposite of that, and in a lot of cases, it's gonna put some pressure on you. Now, it's two inches of an opening height-wise. However, where it really gets you is the width. And if I measure that, it's, it's an inch and a quarter. That's incredibly small. Now, I have smaller ears and it still presses on my ears. Now, if I wiggle it to try to get my ear in there, the depth is actually good. It's almost an inch deep. So it, um, once your ears are kind of, I guess, tucked in, um, it, there's enough room in there and I still think breathing wise, I was able to wear this for extended periods of time and still be fairly comfortable, surprisingly. Um, and part of that became um, because of how good the padding is and how nice the material is. So there are some wins here. I don't want to totally knock the comfort, but to me, that, that can be a deal breaker for some. So I just want to point out that the ear cups are nice. They're soft and padded. Um, they're just very small.
And lastly, because the ear pad padding is so soft, I, again, I really like the padding and they're plush, they work extremely well with glasses. So if you do have smaller ears and you wear glasses and you're concerned with long-term comfort, you're good to go there. Um, they will be very forgiving and I don't foresee any extra pressure because the lighter clamp force and soft pads, this should be one of the best sub 60, sub $70 headsets you can buy for people who wear glasses. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Astro A10 Gen 2 microphone. There are some things I like and dislike about it. Um, it's a softer mic, so if you are a soft-spoken person, um, your friends may not hear you as well, especially if you play with people who are not soft-spoken or have a much more sensitive mic, you'll definitely be the quiet one of the bunch. Now, what I do like about the A10 mic is it has a very decent uh, background noise rejection. So if you're concerned about noise rejection and uh, picking up like your keyboard sounds or other people in the room, this is probably one of the better uh, if definitely a leading microphone in that price range, the 50 to seventy dollar, fifty to eighty dollar price range, when it comes to background noise rejection, especially considering it's fully passive. There's no software; it just does a good job at that. I think clarity-wise, it's okay. It's about average. A lot of microphones in this price range sound okay. Um, it's certainly passable. You're not going to want to use this for a professional podcast or anything, um, especially with the low noise, but it's passable. Now it's time to talk about sound quality. My favorite part of the review, um, this is where I spend most of my time testing the headsets. Um, this, So with this particular one, I already mentioned the whole sensitivity thing being a benefit before. That really helps more than you'd think when you're playing on console. Um, controllers don't have good amps, and this actually does a really good job of getting the most out of your controller, uh, especially in this price range. It's more sensitive than the Black Shark V2s, um, better than the Rockat Elo X Stereo, which is another great headset, and the Recon 500s. This, I tested a bunch of different ones, and the sensitivity of this is great. It sounds better than I expected. Now, as far as bass performance goes, the A10 Gen 2s actually sound better than I expected. You'd think that with 32 millimeter drivers, they would sound pretty poor compared to its competition at this price range, but the tuning on the bass is actually nice. It hits bass as low as 20 hertz, better than I expected to. Yes, there's some roll off, but not that much. So if you're concerned about bass reproduction, I actually think this is a good balance point of being relatively smooth and full, but not overpowering and muddy. Some gaming headsets have way too much bass and it ruins your clarity in your mids. It affects the tone of the headset. Um, and then you have other headsets, something, uh, well, I don't want to call out too many, but you know, there's a couple steel series at this price range that the bass rolls off pretty aggressively below 50 hertz and you lose some of the dynamics of the game. So bass response is actually quite nice. Now, if you play Warzone, I know not it's a controversial game, not a lot of people play it as much as they used to. Warzone's footsteps range 100 to 200 hertz typically. So these have a slight hump in that range, not a big one, but it naturally boosts the frequency range that footsteps are in Warzone, which is awesome. Now, also conveniently, there is a dip at 800 to 1000 hertz on this. And I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to get into the whole scientific measurement part, but that is a very noisy area in Warzone as far as like gulag and ambient noise. Um, so this headset, just by, I don't know if it's by luck or if they designed it with that game in mind, has a very good natural sound performance for games like Warzone. Um, so they really got the bass and the mid range nice for that. Now, because the bass isn't too strong, because the treble is not too sharp, and I'll get into the treble, the mids actually sound fairly present and flat. So if you are using this for occasional movie or music listening, these actually have a pretty good versatile sound profile. Um, they work on everything. They're not gonna sound great on everything or almost anything. Again, it's a $60 headphone. They don't have incredible sound, but they have a really versatile sound profile that helps you enjoy a lot of games. Now, I think where it gets let down a little bit is the upper mids to treble range. These have a recessed sound profile. There's a couple things that it does, but basically these aren't that sharp and detailed. When you compare it to, um, to me, one of the best sounding sub $50 headphones is the Rockat Elo X Stereo, which I think is on sale for like 35 or $40 a lot. That's a pretty amazing deal from the sound quality perspective. Um, those have a brighter, more detailed sound. The Turtle Beach Recon 200 Gen 2s, um, I think they're 50 now. Um, they're either 50 or 60, they're less than this. And they have more um, detail and sharpness to it. Now, some people don't want that. Again, this works with everything. 
Whereas on certain things you play, the other ones that I mentioned will be more rewarding. You know, um, Deep, Rock Deep Rock Galactic from uh, on PlayStation 5, that doesn't have the most dynamic sound production to me. Um, but headsets like the other ones, like the ELO, like the, the Recon 200s, or even the Black Shark V2s, it makes that game sound a little bit more dynamic and fun to listen to. However, on games like Warzone, some of those headsets can be too sharp and the plane strike might hurt your ears. So this is kind of like a safe profile at $60 and it's not gonna, it's not gonna blow you away, but it, you shouldn't be um, struggling or disappointed with almost everything you listen to. It's just gonna have a similar sound production with everything. I think when it comes to sound stage, which is basically how open the headset sounds, this is a closed back $60 headphone. It's not a top tier headphone. So your sound stage is a little bit more compressed in your head. That basically means that if someone is off in the distance this way, you know, far left, you can't quite get the full sense of depth or distance as you would with a more expensive or premium product. You know, the Arctis Prime at $100 probably has the widest sound stage under 100 bucks. Those are going to give you just a little bit more pinpoint detail and presence for distance, not just left and right. Overall, however, the imaging is great. I think the drivers left and right are balanced really well. So it's very easy to pinpoint where sounds are coming from. It just may not have as vast of a sound stage. So um, I hope I explained that well. I'm always happy to talk about this. So if you have questions, shoot me a comment below. I'll be happy to dive into it more. Now, because this is an analog headset, there's no apps or special tuning or anything like that. They work with Dolby Atmos and Sony's uh, Tempest 3D audio. So if you're concerned with that, all of those work totally fine. You can use apps like that to tune the sound. So if you want to brighten it up, go to the Dolby Atmos app, put it on game mode and try it, or try um, movie mode and put it on detailed and see if that helps give you a little bit more presence up top if you're looking to have a brighter uh, sound reproduction. Now, as I mentioned before, I, um, from my long-term experience with these, I've used these for about a, a week or two now because I, I couldn't get them before launch. I had to buy them. So the I actually found the comfort to be not as bad as I expected, even with the smaller opening. I think because they have such good ear pads, um, I have smaller ears, I was able to enjoy them and wear them for a long period of time. My biggest struggle with this was actually the microphone sensitivity. I, if I play games, I have kids. I usually play at night. I don't like yelling into my headset to my friends. And my friends often said that um, I was harder to hear with this headset. So I think that was my biggest drawback, but at $60 overall, I actually liked it more than I expected to. Um, I don't think most people would be disappointed. It's really just the risk of if this ear pad opening and overall feel is right for you. All right, so that wraps up the review. I hope you found this helpful. Um, I tend to babble a lot. I know this is a fairly simple headset, but I really wanted to cover every nuance uh, with it after using it for a long time. Um, if you found this review helpful, great. If not, sorry, <laughs> we do what we can. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate any support. I know I have a few people out there, especially that comment on a lot of videos. So uh, Rory Taylor and Buff Barnaby, if you watch this review and you made it to the end, shoot me a comment. <laughs> I'm curious if you saw it. Thank you all though, either way, so much for the support. Again, I'll have a link in the description uh, below if you want to purchase this and I'll help you find it that way. And with that being said, I'll see you next time.